So today is our first office hour session, section of our collab together. Today is an anniversary with Katrina. Thank you, Anne Meredith. Yeah, thank you for bringing that. Yeah, it's, it's heavy to be thinking about all the reality of the climate crisis and the collapse that's happening as we look at the society that just continues business as usual in different forms and different technology. And it's truly an inspiration for us to all be together to think about how we can remember our relationship with energy and each other and try to get back into how things used to be the way that our indigenous ancestors have been doing and indigenous relatives have been holding for so many centuries. So today, as we're waiting for folks to come in, we're going to first kickstart, as usual, with a previously on the emergency battery collab. A little recap and session five. Yeah, so last time we all got together, we presented different problems that you may be presented with in your community or in your group. And we broke out into small groups and we had discussions and we came back and we talked about those discussions. And what we really tried to highlight was everyone has different expertise, knowledge, and talents. And everyone's an expert in their own regard, in their own field. And coming together as a community can really help collect all those talents and make them to our benefit and make a very unique and special collaboration that's very specific to our community and our group of friends. Yeah, I would say that nobody knows everything and together we know a whole lot. So how do we hold a space so that you don't feel like if you have the idea of putting forth a community backup power supply, setting up an emergency battery to the community, you don't feel like you have to know every single thing. You could just put out the idea and then see how people re respond because together we know a whole lot. Thank you for bringing up that point, both of you. We were trying to identify just what to talk about today. And one of the things that came up was some of the questions seemed very similar around organization about how to start or reservations from starting a battery collective of your own. So one of the things that we wanted to make sure everyone on this call understands is that you are a representative of your community. Being a representative of a community doesn't mean that you have to be the battery expert, doesn't mean you have to be the technological expert, doesn't mean you have to be the where this is going to be stored expert. One of our hopes is that people will understand how to reach out to their community, how to get more people involved in their community, how to have those conversations. Through those conversations, you're going to identify a lot about an individual. One of the things that you're going to identify is, oh, wow, this is going to be, he, this person, he or she may make the perfect storage place. Like they have a, a dry basement. That's great. This person works at a company that has excess wire and, and wire just left over that they scrap wire. Great. We have his resource for that or her resource for that. And you'll start identifying individuals and their resources and pulling them in. And then you'll start identifying the experts in certain fields and people who have the capacity and the desire to want to dig deep into these topics. It would take a long time to take someone's vibration that may be planting or something like that and try to change it to a hard battery with wires, um, which we're not trying to do. We're not trying to fit a square peg into a round hole. We want to identify who is the round hole, who can fit the round hole and slide them into the, that position. So ideally, as you're inviting people into your community, developing your community, you want the people who are naturally inclined to do these things to try to step up to do those things and to encourage them. I noticed that you're a technical person um, or I noticed that uh, you have a technical aspect of your personality, so we're not pigeonholing them. <laughs> and then say, hey, we would love to have that be part of a larger community. We would love to bring that in. Can you help in this way? Or how do you see yourself fitting in? Normally, if you identify those gaps, people who are inclined to it have a natural desire to want to levitate to that location. So just allow them to do that. And that kind of goes hand in hand with another thing that I think we saw in some of the questions around conflict mitigation and how to hold space and so forth. We did address that in one of our earlier sessions, but I just want to make sure that it's addressed today so everyone's on the same page. Every community is different. 
we can't give you an outline as far as do this or have this agreement or have this agreement. You're going to establish your community, the agreements that you all come up with, you're going to come up with. I would, I think all of us would definitely probably encourage that you allow the conflict to come up and that make sure you set up some type of, of process or agreement with your community. And I'm going to say agreement versus a process about how you guys are going to resolve those issues or just talk about them. All conflict doesn't have to be resolved. So sometimes just saying, Hey, here's the situation. I'd like to have the battery at my place versus having it at a central location because whatever, I have more power outages than everyone else. My wires are fragile. Like whatever the case is, at least that person can present their side and the community as whole can respond to that and say, actually a central location here is one mile from everyone. That's why we're, we're making a decision to put it there. But you want the conversation to happen so everyone can be on the same page and understand why they're not on the same page. But as far as saying this is what you do when there's a conflict, there's no roadmap to that. Aside from, again, in us encouraging everyone to have those conversations, make sure there's space for it. There's no right, right way. There's no wrong way. It's just everyone should be curious. And that's what we would offer is that everyone's curious about what's happening and what's going on. Yeah. And seeing Anna's photo of the sea turtle, that makes me think about swimming <laughs> and thinking, I don't know if everyone has tried swimming before in this room, but it requires a lot of coordination between your arms, your hands, your legs, your lung, your head, your neck, your chest, all the coordination across. And what, what Yasir and Kansas talk about with different roles and different people is that coordination. And how do you wrestle with the conflict when your leg and your arms start hitting each other and your head start hitting your arms? What do you do with that? The best way to do is just get in the water and try it. You can spend all day you want to watch all the YouTube videos about how to swim, read all the books about the benefit of swimming and what type of styles of swimming. The most important thing is for you to get in the water and try it out. And of course, how you try it Having some guidance is also really helpful. So today, with our office hours, we want to hold that space to help all of you to at least get a sense of being ready. And I know a lot of you all just probably feel like if I have the battery, I am ready. A lot of times, even if you have the battery and you don't have the people who understand how to be with each other, how to think with community, the battery will just be sitting there and doing nothing or could become a liability or be stolen if you don't have that connective tissue between the people that's going to be part of this. And this is why we spend so much time in these sessions so far talking about your relationship with your people. I, th I feel like another mental hurdle we're trying to fight as a society is this idea of, when we even say just like building a collective, I think we all imagine something like 20, 30 people in a room and Everyone has compartmentalized parts and they're moving around and they're shuffling and it's this efficient unit that's like working when in reality, your organization, your group, your collectives will change in size and what they do and what they care about over time. That's just how we as animals and nature work, right? So I think thinking of yourself as building some component of soil, you and your community are in this some component of soil and sometimes you'll get interactions with other creatures or even nutrients and things that are flooded into your environment. And as you can team up with them, you can respond to them in different ways. And I really think that's what starting, quote unquote, a collective is like. It could just be you and your best friend. It could be maybe some other group that you already have similar uh, alignments around, whether it be like a worship group or some other type of activity group or hobby group. They can be any size and the connections can be to anything. So when we say building your community, that could start just building with your immediate friend or your family, right? And starting to experience as we're talking about, it's really a lot about breaking down those norms that we have and of understanding of how we want or expect other people to behave and really just listening to building spaces to listen to other people and really actually observe how people behave. September is Emergency Preparedness Month around the nation. So I've taken it upon myself to use that as a way to begin on various social media platforms 
to have a conversation about preparedness. On my postings on Instagram, Facebook, I've talked about being prepared. I'm going to introduce this necessity for energy, for power. And there is a community-based organization I've been working with that does food distribution, which I'm going to introduce this concept to, as well as finding a way to do it in my own home so that I can say, this is what I'm doing, and this could be sustained and improved at this community-based organization that has a number of different services. But I think to begin the conversation out loud, all of us could use Emergency Preparedness Month as a springboard for just having this conversation amongst ourselves, like at home, wherever home is, amongst people we know, et cetera. So that's how I'm going to begin the process. Those tutorials about how to set up your own battery, et cetera, et cetera. I'm going to use those for myself and then begin to share those throughout the course of the month of September. So that's why I'm going to begin this rollout. Thanks for putting that offer out here, Kelvin. Thank you. And the fact that we're still here together in this cohort, we have three office hours, including today. It's really important for us to make sure we can answer whatever questions you might have to help us help you get it implemented and do and get some some things moving forward. I think just coming into this circle, like we already have our collective, like our community, we can always broaden and deepen and connect more and more between our different mutual aid groups. But we already have the groups like we've been doing. And so grateful to be learning more from other dear ones around the country around the world who are doing this work and also like we've been on the ground so hungry and excited to learn more about how not just about physical battery how that's going to come together but just honoring too that that some of us are, are planting seeds in many different ways some of it within already existing collectives and just weaving in some additional resources or adding some more layers to some of the solar battery conversations we, we've been having as well in different forms because we've had to be surviving hurricanes and all the things long term all right sending our love and gratitude